instead of running for PTA, we did, or getting involved with PTA, we decided to run for president. Joe Schreiner left his home in Ohio and hit the road with his wife and two kids in a 1974 conversion van. He's campaigning across the U.S., saying hi to friends on the way. Schreiner says the $150 in his campaign fund isn't a problem. His ideas will get him on the ballot and into the White House. If the environment in the country right now and between the abject poverty in the inner city and the drugs and the violence, it's just not a healthy place to raise kids anymore. Wife Liz says she's ready for her role as first lady, but it hasn't all been smooth sailing. In Arizona, there was an incident with a mule. And I fed one of the mules a saltine cracker, which apparently he didn't like. And so right after he ate the cracker, he reached out and he, and he bit my thigh. And, <laughs> and I, was, I was being interviewed by a reporter in Kingman, uh, Arizona, right afterwards, and I told him the story. And he looked at me and he goes, ah, don't worry, he's probably a Democrat. Now this is grassroots politics. On the campaign trail, Alona Carson, NBC4 Amarillo. It's good to have faith. Full of campaign funds, but there's no rule that says you have to be rich to be president. As KPTM's Christy Anderson tells us, there's nothing stopping an average Joe off the street from stopping the campaign trail. Hello, folks. My name's Joe Schreiner. I'm running for president of the United States. It's a newspaper article. About He's not your typical candidate, but Joe Schreiner sees himself as a pretty good choice for president. The whole political system right now, and especially the election process, has gotten to be a lot of hoopla, a whole lot of extravaganza and stuff. And, and we don't think that's how it should be. We just don't think that's how it, it was meant to be. So. Now, now, most presidential candidates pull up in a shiny black Cadillac and are followed by an entourage of media consultants. But not Joe. He pulls up in a 1974 Dodge Explorer. Seven months ago, this average Joe declared his candidacy. And he and his family have been on the road ever since. We, we left home with a thousand bucks and the little motor home over there. And, and what we're trying to show America is that you don't necessarily have to buy your way into the White House. You can. So we're calling it the average Joe revolution. But most people Joe runs across don't exactly buy into that idea. You're running for president. I'm serious. <laughs> oh, well, what's the code? What's the code? Well, Here, well, just at least president. take a look. Just take a look. All right, huh? we'll take a look. All right, thanks. 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 Appreciate it. Take care. I would guess that he probably doesn't have much of a chance, unfortunately, because the amount of money it takes to actually be a presidential candidate. And it's, uh, he doesn't have much chance, I'm afraid, with all the, the other money that's, that's out there. And unfortunately, it is a money deal. I mean, it's, that's, that's what it's about. But I don't, I don't fault you for trying. And that's the message Joe wants to make clear. This is America, and anybody can run for president. We're so far from nuts. Um, if anything, and it's, I don't want to sound really Pollyannish, but this is America. And part of the whole electoral process is anybody can run for president. And In Omaha with photographer Mark Smith, Christy Anderson, KPTM News. In addition to his pins and flyers, you can read about Joe's campaign on the web at VoteForJoe.com. It was in Morro Bay today as part of what he calls his whistle-stop tour across America. The Ohio Republican and journalist is running as a writing candidate. He, his wife, and their two children have traveled in their van to 26 states so far. He says if people take the time to stop and listen, they will hear his message. I do think we're going to win, and I believe that strongly. And the reason why is because, as concerned parents, there's a whole lot of people sitting around their living rooms right now feeling totally powerless to impact the political systems, you know, and to make this country a better country for their kids. And what we represent is all these people sitting around their living rooms right now saying, gee, I could run a country better than this. His platform includes education reform and nuclear disarmament. Schreiner will drive to Santa Barbara and Los Angeles next week and then to New Mexico. Meantime, Hunt budget campaign run by a Midwesterner who calls himself just an average Joe. This is how Bill Mitchell takes us out on the campaign trail, sort of. Another day, another stop on the campaign trail. The candidate and the presidential party stopped at the aquarium to drum up some votes. Instead of joining the PTA this year, we decided to run for president. Joe Schreiner was a journalist and a drug counselor in Ohio when he dropped out a few years ago. And since then, he's picked up a wife and a couple of kids and a few supporters in his average Joe presidential campaign. You don't really think you're going to get elected president. We think we're going to win. What about all that money you need to get elected? And what we're trying to show the American public is you can get your message out for a whole lot less than all the millions of dollars. Hi, folks. Hi. 
My husband is running for president of the United States. His wife, Liz, is a native New Zealander. So don't most women want a home, friends, and roots? Well, I had that. And I think that there's more to be done in life. And that's what we're doing. For now, and until they move into the White House, home is a donated van and a new opportunity every day to tell their story. Can Joe Average become president? Joe Schreiner thinks so. On the campaign trail, Bill Mitchell, News 12. Schreiner and his wife say they hope to take their campaign to every eastern state between now and Election Day in November. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Daybreak on this Wednesday morning. I see it. Once, once the second half hour hits, I get the day right. You get yeah. rocking, rolling. Wednesday, halfway through the work week. Right. We're ready to go. Before you know it, the weekend will be here. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah, fun show coming up. Mm. We're going to rock and roll at the end of the show. Here. Oh, really? And we are. You didn't know that, did you? <laughs> no. We have I a, didn't. A, a local band here who's. Uh, Heading out to L.A. this summer. They're pretty good. Um, they were actually here yesterday, so we'll let you hear one of their tunes. Uh, the Average Joe will be here. Oh, yeah. You know who the Average Joe is? I've heard a lot about him. He's running for president. This is the guy right there. <laughs> Uh, he's traveling across America in his uh, Winnebago or his uh, motorhome or whatever with his family running for president. So <laughs> We could probably use a couple of average Joes. Uh, yeah. You know? That's around. true. In Washington. Yeah. yeah there's not many average uh, Joes in Washington. And we also have another one of our favorite guests, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Local attorney George Casenza. George is smart. Yeah. He will tell us all about libel and billing himself as just the average Joe. Joining us now is the average Joe, Joe Schreiner. Joe, thanks for joining us this morning. We appreciate it. Uh, you have a good name if you want to bill yourself as the average Joe, I guess. <laughs> yeah. You are running for president. What made you decide to do this? Well, it's twofold. One, I'm a concerned parent, and we have a two-year-old and a four-year-old, and I'm concerned about them growing up in the climate in America as it is right now, in between the youth violence and the abject poverty and the pollution levels and, and the drug abuse levels. It's just gotten a little bit nuts for kids. And, and so on one level, we want to make that better. And I'm also a journalist, Mike, and I spent about eight years on the road. I traveled about 100,000 miles researching just everyday citizens who came forward in their community, and they said, look, we got a problem with the youth here with violence or with pollution why don't we deal with it as opposed to the federal government stepping in and dealing with it and so what we'd like to do is take some of these average citizens who uh, are doing their average things. Joes right, right. <laughs> and we want to take them to DC and what we'd like to do is set up a national citizens commi uh, commission with these kind of people to run the government for a while what uh, you, you've traveled all across the nation, right, coast to coast right. in your mobile home with your family. Right. This has gone on for how long? Well, we've been on the road for 14 months, and we've traveled wow. 14,000 miles so far with a two and a four-year-old. So <laughs> stopping yeah. at every small town and big city in between. Right. We've been in a lot of places. A lot of the other candidates haven't been. Mike. What's yeah. uh, what's the reaction or the vibe you get from people on the road out there in the nation when you tell them you're running for president? I, I would imagine you get a lot of laughs. Well, I get president of what a lot of times. <laughs> right. And the other so thing does is Clinton. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's the libel thing. Oh, uh, right. yeah, right. Um, uh, one of the things, and we just had this experience. We were down in Knoxville, and they sent a reporter out to cover one of our whistle stop events. Uh -huh. And he was kind of Andy Rooney-ish, Mike, and, and he came right. up to do a funny piece, and he interviewed us, and then he interviewed some people we had talked to on the street. And he came back to me, and very seriously, he said to me, you know, if the whole nation knew about you based on the people I talked to, you would win eight to one at this point. And yeah. so that's the kind of reaction that we're getting. That's the problem. I think individually, everybody maybe at home or, or that you've come in contact with says, I like that guy, but maybe unfortunately it might never happen where you actually do win. Have you considered that? We're going to win. You, we're you gonna, are going to win. I don't know if you know no football. Doubts, right? I don't know if you know football, but Joe Namath in the third Super Bowl when they came to him and said, well, what do you think your chances are? They were 19-point underdogs. Uh -huh. He said, I guarantee we're going to win. And Mike, I guarantee that we're going to win too. And I know that might sound out there a bit, but you watch what happens. It's Super Bowl right. three. Right. I was just barely alive, I think, at that point in time. Uh, you yeah. mentioned here that you will not live in the White House. Right. Why? 
Well, one of the things that we're asking the American public to look at is cutting back lifestyle and to help more in the inner city and the third world. America has the wherewithal to do that. And so for a family of four to move into this big house in D.C. doesn't match up with our platform. So what we'll do is we'll move into an urban city area and work from the inside out to help change a neighborhood and also work on the national issues in tandem. But we think right now because of urban sprawl, so many people are moving out to the suburban areas and leaving a lot of the marginalized, abandoned in the inner cities. And, and so we're going to ask the American public to think about starting to move back into the cities. But if it would just be so much rhetoric if we weren't doing it. And, and so that's, that's our rationale.